So this question comes from Anonymous. So this person is asking a rather normal standard question, but wants to remain anonymous, so we will let him remain, or her remain, anonymous. So I have installed Windows 8 on my laptop, as it is, it is an ASUS, and I want to know uh, if any of the ASUS applications are actually useful, or if I can do without them. Also, there is always a lot of background processes, and I do not know how to cope with them. Can I delete every single Windows 8 app, as long as I do not find it useful? With that actually help in the performance of my laptop or do I upgrade to Windows 8.1? Thank you for your time. So there's, there's a couple of questions in here and these are all kind of like the PC tune-up variety questions. Let's let's answer the last question first and then go from there. So, so the first question is, is I have a Windows 8 computer, should I upgrade it to Windows 8.1? And Unless you have a very specific reason as to why not, I would argue, yes, you should. Uh, Windows 8.1, it's, it's at least as stable as Windows 8. I don't, I don't see any downsides to Windows 8.1. I mean, I hate the whole Windows 8 line, like, period. But if you're already having a Windows 8 computer, I would argue Windows 8.1 is better. So since Windows 8.1 is the newest of the Microsoft operating systems for security and stability and support and all those purposes, I would argue you upgrade to Windows 8.1, especially since it's free. So really, Windows 8 to Windows 8.1 is basically a no-brainer. Windows 7 to Windows 8.1, that's an entirely different story. But you've already decided to go down the Windows 8 track, so just go to Windows 8.1. <laughs> Once you're at Windows 8, I'm not really sure how much worse you can do. <laughs> so yes, def definitely, definitely, definitely go to Windows 8.1. Now then let's go to the first question. The first question is, this person has an ASUS a laptop computer, and whenever you buy a uh, computer from one of the major manufacturers, they load it up with all kinds of stupid-ass software. Uh, they do this uh, for, for two purposes. Uh, one purpose is uh, they have specific software that they want on your computer uh, to make it run better, things like recovery software and all that kind of stuff. And the other purpose is they load up your computer with all this kind of trial and bloatware because if you end up buying any of that trial or bloatware they then get a commission one of the one of the reasons you can buy laptop computers for 300 bucks is because you know if somebody actually goes out and buys you know uh, paintbrush pro or whatever the hell it's called uh, that they preloaded onto your computer uh, the company, Asus or Dell or whoever, you know, gets a little twenty or thirty dollar kickback for doing on that. So they actually make money. It's kind of like a lot of the trial and bloatware is basically like an affiliate program um, that these these vendors use in order to try to make money. So they they dump in five or ten additional pieces of software. If you buy them, they make more money. And if they if you don't, their argument is it's only trialware, so you don't really have to worry about it. But the problem is, is a lot of the software uh, starts when your computer starts up, so it can actually slow your computer down and cause performance issues. So you have to be very careful when you start uh, deleting software that the manufacturer actually installed on your computer because you have to look you have to look and see what it is you are uninstalling because 90% of the software that your manufacturer put on your computer can be uninstalled. It will do wonderful things for your computer. There's 10% of the things. If you uninstall them, you will be screwed. So, basically what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to figure out what software you actually don't use on your computer. Whether it was the manufacturer installed stuff or whether it's trialware or freeware that you've installed yourself. That was one of the biggest things when we would uh, tune up computers is simply uninstalling all of this crapware that people installed onto their computers. So if you go in, take a look at all the applications that are installed on your computer and take a note and think about what you don't actually use anymore. Do you still play StarCraft 2? Do you still play uh, World of Warcraft? Do you still use this particular uh, photo editing software? Uh, if you do, keep it. But if you don't, get rid of it. Even like I say, things like old video games, you don't realize how much space old video games take up. Old video games can take up gigs of space uh, on your hard drive, and if you don't play them anymore, then, then what the hell's the point? So whether or not uh, it's the... Uh, 
manufacturer installed software or you've installed it yourself, just go through and just take a look. And there's going to be a lot of obvious things where you go, oh yeah, I installed that video editing software two years ago, but you know what? I used it once and I thought it was a piece of crap and you just left it there. Well, that's taking up space. That's taking up resources. There may be startup processes that occur when your computer starts up because of that software. So just uninstall it. Now, what you're going to do is when you're going to go in there and you're looking at the manufacturer installed software, you're going to see a lot of weird things on there, especially nowadays. You're going to see like online back, like Dell has their own like online backup services. So you're going to see things like online backup services, or you may see like the Asus music player, things like that. Any of that kind of stuff, you get to decide what you want to do, but basically you can delete it. Anything that looks pretty normal, like an Asus movie player, an Asus music player, Asus video editor, any kind of that st stuff, you can get rid of it if you want. What you do not want to get rid of is anything that looks like it has to do with recovery. Anything that has to do with recovery, keep on your computer. Because nowadays, whenever you buy a Windows 8 or 8.1 computer, you don't get the recovery disks anymore, right? They just, they they don't give you disks anymore. And so what that, that recovery software does is it allows you to reset your computer back to factory defaults or to be able to do things like create re recovery disks. So, uh, so let's say your computer fails your hard drive fails, well, how are you going to reinstall the operating system if you don't have any disks? So that recovery software is very important to keep so that, um, again, if your hard drive fails, if something else happens, you can actually restore your computer and it's not basically a big paperweight. So that that's the type of thing. So anything like anything that has to do with like the management and administration of your computer, like I've seen a lot of different things. Again, uh, rec any kind of recovery, restore, tools, right? Keep all that kind of stuff. Do not delete that. Um, other things like driver support, like some of these, uh, some of these, uh, vendors, you know, they'll, they'll have their own special like, uh, video card, uh, interface or whatever. So anything like that, anything that seems to pertain to the actual administration of the box of the computer, uh, keep, don't screw with at all. Um, again, any of the others, like the ancillary stuff, movie makers and file players, and this and that and the other feel free to get rid of now the question then comes so we've gone through and you've upgraded to windows 8.1 uh you've uninstalled all the crap but you're like well the computer is still acting slow one of the issues is when your computer is acting slow is because of all the startup processes so when windows computer boots up um they had a good idea that's that's gone screwy where basically a lot of times when you double click a piece of software and the double and the, the software has to cold start so essentially no component of that software is running it has to totally load into ram and actually get started it will take a long time so what manufacturers realized they could do is there's there's a registry uh, key uh, within the windows operating systems that allows you to kind of like pre-start programs so you'll see this with Ad adobe is horrible with this you know, like Adobe Reader or QuickBooks is horrible with this. There's a lot of this software out there that they, you're either using it or you don't. Uh, you don't need it to start up uh, when your computer starts in order to, to make it work better. But the problem is, is you'll have a lot of these different pieces of software that kind of like pre-start when your computer starts up. But the problem is, is then they start using all kinds of resources. So they're using RAM, they're using hard drive, they're using processor power, even though you don't actually uh, use them. So this is part of the whole startup routine. So if you want to get rid of the startup uh, stuff in your startup, what I would argue you should do is go over, uh, it's this company called Piriform, Piriform, but what you're looking for here is it's called CCleaner. I've used CCleaner for years. I know there's some people out there that are going to argue, again, use whatever the hell you want. I argue, I like CCleaner. What CCleaner does is it's a way to go in and it cleans and optimizes your computer. So it'll go through and it'll clean all your temporary files. If you want it to, it'll go through and clean all your temporary files. You'd be surprised how much crap can get stuck in your temporary files. I saw computers that would come in back in the day for tune-ups and they'd have 50 gigs of stuff in temporary files and such. So it'll go through and it'll clean that kind of stuff up. Uh, but the bigger thing for you is it has this component for quicker startup. 
And what you can do is you can go and you can take a look at the startup processes. And what you can do is you can actually disable certain things that start when your computer starts. So if you see QuickBooks is starting uh, when your computer starts, but you don't want it to start when your computer starts, you can simply disable. What's nice about using something like CCleaner, instead of going into the registry and editing yourself, is that if you make a horrible mistake, then all you've done is disabled the registry key. Like I used to back in the day, you actually go in and delete the registry key. Well, the problem is if you go in and you delete the registry key, but then you find out later you needed that registry key, then you've got to do a whole bunch of Google searching in order to figure out how to recreate the registry key. If you use something like CCleaner, you can go in, you can disable the registry key. If that screws something up, then you can go, you can reboot the computer, re-enable the registry key, and away you go. So I've seen this before. Like we had this one issue where um, way back in the day, um, multi-touch drivers nobody used multi-touch on, on PCs. Uh, it wasn't that multi-touch didn't exist on PCs, it's just nobody used it. If you, if you told a user that their little, little trackpad or their, their pad allowed them to do multi-touch, they had no idea what the hell you're talking about. So one of the things is the multi-touch drivers and software back in the day took a decent amount of resources. So one of the things we did is we simply, uh, when we did the tune-ups, we would delete those, the, the registry key for the startup of those drivers when the computer started, uh, which was fine. Literally, 1,000 computers, 2,000 computers we did this to, except for the one time, the one person in 2007 that actually used multi-touch. And we deleted the registry key, and then he's like, what happened to my multi-touch? And we're like, y you actually use that? Yes, it's vital to me. And then that was about an hour of Google searching to try to recreate that particular uh, key. And so that's one of the things you run into. And so that's why going through and disabling the startup items is the best way to go. So that would be my, my thoughts for you. Um, I would say before you start messing around with your computer, especially uh, if you're asking me questions like this, is make sure you do a full backup of your computer. You have a, a backup that you can actually recover from. CCleaner, again, I have used this literally, not figuratively, literally on thousands of computers. I have never seen it kill a computer. Not saying it can't. <laughs> not saying it can't kill a computer. So I would say, especially at the level you seem to be, make sure you do a full backup that you in fact can recover from if you do something stupid, um, and then go through upgrade to Windows 8.1, um, delete all the crapware on your computer that you don't need. That does not. That's not tools. That's not drivers. Not any of that kind of stuff. Um, and then go through and clean up your startup routine and your computer. Your computer will be a better running piece of crap. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's Windows 8.1. I really, like, it's not even a joke. Like, this thing is Windows 8. You know the last time I turned this thing on? This, this was a gift from Intel. This is a over a $1,000 Dell XPS computer uh, that has Windows 8 on it. And, um, yeah, I, I can't even tell you the last time I turned the thing on. So, so it's nothing against you. I just truly and utterly hate Windows 8. 8.1 is a tiny bit better. Although I will say, for any of you guys that think I'm just a Microsoft hater now, Windows 10 is looking good. Windows 10, depending on what the price point of it is, uh, looks like it will be a good uh, operating system. Um, and so that's the other thing you might think about too, is if you're playing around and screwing around, is you can download uh, the Windows 10 um, beta version, the development version, and you may want to play around with that. Because um, I can say, I have to say, like when I started playing around with Windows 10 again, there's a lot of stuff I liked about Windows 10. Uh, yeah, but that's just a thought. So those are the thoughts. You will have a better running Windows 8 computer. Ah, I hate Windows 8. I so, 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 so hate Windows 8.